It's 11 a.m. on a Wednesday morning and the Canadian women's rowing team is already on to their second practice of the day. All eight have their eyes set on the summer games in London, but one in particular will be watching her teammates from the sidelines this year. Past Olympian Sarah Bonikowski didn't make this year's Olympic selection, but Sarah would be the first to tell you her sweep into the world of rowing has been one filled with surprises. I really thought that I was going to pursue um, some sort of a career in music. I really wanted to be a rock star. Um, and I auditioned on classical piano. But the dream of being a rock star quickly faded away. I didn't get in my first year of university, and uh, that was pretty devastating for me. But I hired a private teacher that the university recommended, and. Um, went to school and did my first year and kept practicing these audition pieces. Um, and when it came to do the second audition, the playing went really well. And in the interview, they said, you know, what do you want to use music for? And I said, well, I want to um, write and perform my own music. And the dean said to me, well, you know, that's pretty much impossible, right? I don't think this is the school for you. Devastated, her dream was shattered. Trying to figure out what to do next, she decided to continue to pursue her major in philosophy and check out the varsity rowing team for fun. I think realizing my potential in rowing was a very long process for me. I really just wanted the experience of being on a team because I hadn't ever had time to be on a sports team in high school. Rowing was now becoming a serious interest, but one Sarah was only committed to staying with until the end of university. That's until her coach convinced her otherwise. My coach, uh, Rick Crawley, actually convinced me to stay for an extra year of school. So I canceled my application to graduate and I added another minor and rode for another year. And we came out and I still thought I would try out for the team and then that would be my swan song and goodbye to rowing. Um, but my partner and I came third at the national trial and I was invited to compete for a spot on uh, the, the senior national team that summer. There's two different types of rowing. There's After a series of races, qualifying so competitions and an initial hesitancy about rowing, Sarah Bonikowski found out the summer of 2006 she had made the Canadian women's rowing team. I certainly was not prepared for and uh, all teams go through, they call it the storming, norming, performing stages and uh, it was just a whole nother level, you know, going from maybe two practices a day to three and rowing with people who'd been to one or even two Olympics already. It was, it was a whole new level. It was definitely, definitely the big show. But the bigger show would come two years later at the Beijing Summer Olympics, the event every athlete dreams of. We actually didn't qualify the year before, so we had to go through the late qualifier in Poland, which was only about two months before the Olympics. So that was a very, very tough year of training, but I think it made us really strong. And we were, um, we won a silver and bronze medals at two of the World Cups. So we went in quite strong to the Olympics, but again, still not knowing what to expect. And, um, the race was a nail biter right down to the line. We were in third for a huge portion of the race. And then the Dutch put on a huge final spurt in the last 20 strokes of the race and passed us in third and also Romania in second. And uh, so we just missed getting on the podium, unfortunately, but it was just an incredible experience to be racing at that level. After the team's nail biter loss, Sarah returned to London, Ontario making the Canadian team once again in 2009. But in 2010, she wasn't as fortunate. That was really hard for me. That was the first year I hadn't made the team since 2006. Then the next year, um, I traveled on the World Cup tour as a spare. Um, and then I went to the Pan Am Games in the women's pair in October. So this brings us up to last year and then 
Um, at nationals, my pair partner and I finished fourth and we were invited to train in the Olympic camp and they cut the team down to only 14 athletes. Um, that was the point where unfortunately I was close, but um, didn't make the cut to travel overseas. They cut the team from 14 to 12 and now um, the team will just be 10 athletes traveling to the Olympics. But even with the disappointing news that she wouldn't be joining her teammates in London at the Summer Olympics this year, Sarah says that she learned some valuable lessons. I've heard it said before that God doesn't have a plan B. <laughs> and uh, I think I'd been become very focused on wanting to use sports as a platform to tell my story. And, you know, I'd, I'd said this is a way, you know, that God can use me. Well, what I'm realizing is God does not need a platform. <laughs> he does not need us to build a platform to tell a story from. I think the Olympics can be an incredible experience for people, but there's also a lot of weight that comes with that from the pressure of performance. A pressure Bonikowski knows all too well, but this recent news has her rethinking her role as an athlete. I think all athletes need to know that their worth is more than gold. Like, and it's, it's a really challenging lesson to learn. And I think the longer you're in sport or, or any job, we come to identify ourselves with what we do and not who we are, and especially as a Christian for who we are in Christ. After being in a world totally based on performance, Sarah's new outlook has her reevaluating her role. Right now, my plan is on retiring, but... <laughs> Retiring? Well, I know. How old are you? I know. Twenty nine. <laughs> I need to retire before I'm thirty. No. <laughs> Sports are are very self centered, and it's awesome to push yourself to that level. But you know, how can we really contribute to others, and how can I best be used? And uh, if God leads me back here, and that's the way I can best be used, then then I will I will do that. Um, so lots of prayers, please. <laughs> and how will she feel as she watches with the rest of the world as her teammates compete in London? You know, I think they've got a really great shot, um, certainly at a medal and, and even going for gold in the eight. Um, I'm really excited and my hope is that I will be just fully in the moment and so happy for them. I mean, every single girl in that crew has earned their spot and I believe they are the fastest, fastest eight um, that our nation has to offer. I certainly think I'll have some emotions of, of sadness of not being able to be there, but uh, like there's no doubt in my mind that that is, you know, that that's who's supposed to be there. But ultimately, Sarah Bonikowski feels this is the path God has chosen for her, even if she doesn't fully understand it. But she will be the first to admit that the time she has spent in rowing has been one of tremendous opportunity. I think that God needed to use rowing in my life to bring that discipline and structure back into it. And there have been times that have been so stressful that it's literally driven me back to God because it was the only way I could handle, I could handle it. And I just really encourage everyone to not forget what's really important and not forget that your worth is more than gold, that you are not what you do. You're a child of God. In London, Ontario, Magdalene John, 100 Huntley Street.